everyone and welcome back to my wine diary. On this channel I shoot educational and fun videos about wine, some tastings and reviews, so if you're into wine as much as I am, please consider subscribing. Now I don't know about you guys, but I shop at Trader Joe's for my wine quite a lot. Every time I go for some groceries through Trader Joe's, I always pick up some wine bottles, which actually ends up being closer to a case of wine just because it's easier to carry to the car. Uh, but I love the variety, I love the price tag, and of course shopping for wine at Trader Joe's, you cannot leave unnoticed huge shelves filled with the two buck chuck, what we call it, the infamous, infamous wine, which is a blend of Charles Shaw. Now Trader Joe's has sold nearly a billion of these bottles since 2002, and the man whose name actually stands behind the wine has not seen a dime from it. So who is Charles Shaw and where, where does this whole story start? Well, Charles Shaw's wines go back as far as 1970s, when the man by the same name, who is now 74 years old, still alive, went to Paris. He went to France and fell in love with wine. Charles Shaw had a dream of bringing French wines to America, and he did just that. He bought a vineyard in California, and by 1979, he rolled out his first harvest of Gamay, which is a varietal of Beaujolais. Now, that wine was so popular and so good that it went on winning many awards, and he even served three White House dinners with it. Now, unfortunately, Charles Shaw's story was not all that bright. Americans at that time were not really that familiar with wines, and local wineries were only producing Cabernets, which was a pretty well-known varietal. So Charles Shaw wanted to create his own niche product. He wanted to create something unique and different, which Gamay was at that point, but Americans were just not buying it. So he was left behind with a lot of unsold wines, which in a sense hurt his business. Unfortunately, Charles Shaw's dark story continues from that point forward. He had some of his wine polluted by one of the suppliers by accident, and then he had a bug that ate his main vineyard all of a sudden too. Very unfortunate chain of events, so the bank started collecting its debt, and Charles Shaw didn't have the money to pay, so he went to his wife trying to get some help. By that point in 1990, his wife Lucy decided all of a sudden that she wants a divorce. She wants to take care of the winery at this point, take over business, and uh, get the money back that she put into the business. So the overall sum was about $450,000, which is now equivalent to about a million dollars. Lucy's plan did not work, so she failed and she had to declare bankruptcy. At that point, the vineyard was snapped by a competitor and sold to the Bronco Wine Company, owned by no one else, by Fred Franzia. The mass producer, you all know Franzia Wines, so he bought it out and in 2002, when the recession hit, he actually decided to offload some of the wines uh, and he sold them to Trader Joe's. So it's at that point uh, that our Charles Shaw wine started being sold at Trader Joe's for only $2. So back then in 2002, they started with $1.99. Right now they're $2.99, started in 2002 with $1.99. So this is literally the story behind Charles Shaw wines and why they're at Trader Joe's. So to this day, they're actually produced by the Bronco Vineyards or the Bronco Wine Company, and they use very cheap uh, corks. They use pretty cheap um, bottling methods. They produce it in bulks too, so that's why the cost of this wine is still so little to this day. So a part of my video today is of course tastings of the three wines of Charles Shaw's from Trader Joe's that I have in front of me. I'm not gonna lie to you, there was a period of my life where I bought Trader Joe's 2.99 wines quite often, and I didn't hate it. To this day, I actually use their wines in my mold wine um, making as well. So if you still haven't seen my mold wine guide, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you want to call it, I'll try and link it right here for you to check. It's pretty cool, especially for the holiday season, whenever it comes. But yeah, I used to buy them, so I've tried them before. This is not my first time tasting them, uh, but let's dive in and see what I think about them now. So I went to Trader Joe's over the weekend and I bought three of their bottles. I got a Cabernet Sauvignon, which is my all-time favorite, 
period. I got Shiraz, my second all-time favorite, and then I got the Red Blend. I tend to enjoy Red Blends. I think they can be pretty versatile and smooth. So I like these styles of wine. So let's give them a go. I think I will start with a Shiraz. I already have it in my glass here. So let's uh, take a look. I have my white background. So we'll take a look at the color first. The color is beautiful. That's one thing I, I gotta give uh, Charles Shaw wines, that they, they pretty much look like a very decent wine. So if you put this into a decanter and serve it to your crowd, I doubt that anyone will even notice how cheap they are. So they're not awfully bad, I have to admit that. Now with this said, I actually cannot stand Charles Shaw's um, Trader Joe's white wines. I think they're absolutely awful. I think the worst that I've ever tried was their Zinfandel. It, it was not even worse. Two or three dollars, whatever it's whatever whatever it's costing there. So, no, a big no for me for their white wines. But their reds are actually pretty decent. I stay away from Merlot for the most part in general, but in between Cabernet, Shiraz, and the Red Blend. I would actually go for them. So I'll tell you the circumstances why I would serve them to people at some points and why. But let's take a look at the color here again. The color is pretty nice. It's a it's a pretty pretty solid ruby color. Don't really see any hues of purple or if they're here, maybe just a little bit. Um, not too much on the legs. It's got some, but you can see how it's not super dense. So the color is beautiful. I would say this is a solid red cherry color here. Pretty nice. I like to swirl it for you as well, for you to see. Let's give it a smell. This Shiraz smell like, like red berries for me. So I would definitely say it's pretty crisp on the nose. It smells like a red cherry. Maybe a little bit of strawberry in this one too. So anything red, red berry related, maybe a red currant as well. It smells okay. It's not the most delicious smell, but it smells fruity. It doesn't have any cork damage to it or anything that smells off and puts you off. Okay, let's go ahead and taste it. it's a pretty fun wine. Fun, not fine. <laughs> I think it's fun. A fun wine. Uh, it's a pretty solid smoky red in my opinion. When I say smoky, I think that it's got a pretty, uh, pretty refined tobacco taste to it. So does it taste like most Shiraz do? I wouldn't necessarily say that, but it's a fun wine. It's not bad, not, not bad at all. It's pretty smoky for a Shiraz, so. Not bad. I would give this one a five and a half or six out of 10. Probably five and a half, five and a half. All right, everyone, next one up is our red wine blend. So let's take a look at this one. We'll take a look at the color first. The color is a little bit deeper on this one. Here I definitely see more of the purple hue undertone and you will see even when I swirl it that it's a little bit darker than our Shiraz was just a second ago. It's a little darker on a collar, dark red cherry or maybe even black cherry at this point. All right, we got the collar. Let's smell it. Mm, this one is very different on the nose. It immediately hits me with some spices. So this is a very cozy smelling wine. And this is the one that I use in my mold wine when I make my mold wine. So it makes perfect sense. And I'm pretty sure that I will taste this as well once I'm ready to taste this wine, but it smells, I immediately smell some spices like nutmeg, maybe coriander or something like that. So just by smelling it, I can already tell you this is a great holiday wine. So let's give it a taste. Mm. Absolutely exactly what I described on the nose. This is yummy. Mm. Mm, the tannins too. That's a pretty solid cheap red wine. <laughs> 
So I have to say that I'm tasting everything that I smelled on the nose. Definitely nutmeg. I do feel uh, now on my palate as well, some of the warming spices to it as well. So cinnamon, maybe uh, coriander, like I said, something like that. Again, all of those spices that actually go into mold wine, that's why I think that this is perfect for mold wine. Now on top of that, another thing that comes through to my palate here is some zest. Not even citrus, but some zest. So it's a little bitter, not like the actual citrus would be, but zesty. Mm. Mm. I think this is a perfect cheap red wine to curl up with on the couch watching some Christmas movies. It's a great holiday wine. It's also a great wine for big crowds if you have them in the house during holiday season and you don't want to splurge and spend a lot of money knowing you have 20 people in the house and everyone drinks wine. So this is a good way to save some money. One more thing comes to mind. This would be an amazing wine to serve to people who are already kind of drunk. So if you started your evening with better, more expensive wines and by the evening end, you see that the crowd is just not ready to leave yet and they still want some wine, but you don't want to open another expensive bottle, that's what I would serve in a decanter and I'm pretty sure the crowd would be pleased. All right, y'all, we're down to the last one and this is our Cabernet Sauvignon. They do, by the way, have years of vintage on them. So the Red Bland and the Shiraz were 2016. This one here, Cabernet Sauvignon, says that it's a 2017 uh, vintage. Oops. Come on, focus. It's refusing to focus for me. There you go, you see how it says 2017. So this is the last one left. I have very high hopes for this one. So far, I like the red blend better than the Shiraz. Let's see if this Cabernet Sauvignon is a good contender. So on the color here, I would say that this cab is darker than the Shiraz, but it's not as dark as the red blend. So it's sitting somewhere in between. Uh, I do see very, very little of the purple hues in it. Mostly those are very rich, um, dark red, berries and fruits that what comes through to me on the color let me swirl it for you you will see the color is really nice actually all three have really decent colors to them let's smell it mm, this one i think i like the most on the nose so far it smells very delicious very fruity on the red scale again, but very woodsy too. So it's got some woods undertones. Mmm. Smells really, really good, this one. Mm, smells really, really good. Let me go ahead and taste this one. I think this is the winner for me. Out of the three, surprise, surprise, Cabernet Sauvignon won for me. I like, personally, this one the best. It's got some of that wood undertones, um, so definitely get that oakiness, but it's not overwhelming, so it's a pretty pleasant, sessionable wine, so you can drink uh, quite a bit of it and not get overwhelmed by it. But it also has, so when I mentioned the red fruits, the darker red fruits and berries that come through on the nose, the one thing that I would add here is probably I'd probably get the red pepper. I would get the red bell pepper on the mouth here as well. So all in all, this is a really, really pleasant cheap red wine. Yeah, this Cabernet is definitely delicious and it is absolutely worth the price. So. I would give this one a go, I would give this one a second try as well, and I can tell you with 100% certainty that I have paid more money for a worse wine, for sure. I've paid closer to 20 bucks for wine that wasn't this good. So Cabernet Sauvignon is a winner in my books, smells amazing, tastes great. The red blend I would certainly use and abuse during holiday season just because of all the warmth and spices in it, how well it goes into our mold wine. Now, when it comes to Shiraz, here's the thing. Again, it is not bad. For $2.99, I think it's worth it. 
But if I have the other two options available and I want to go for the two buck chuck, I would probably get the cab or the red blend instead. Now, if they're completely out and I just need something cheap, I will remember that Shiraz was actually doable too. <laughs> so this is my verdict on all three. Um, I know I've ranked the Shiraz at 5.5 or five points out of 10. I would probably give the red blend a six and I would give this Cabernet Sauvignon a solid six and a half to, to maybe even seven, but I would probably stick to six and a half just because I'm, <laughs> I'm prejudiced just because of its price. So let's give this a six and a half, six and a half, six and five and a half for these Cab, Red Blend and the Shiraz. And this is it you guys. Thank you so much for hanging in here with me uh, and tasting and reviewing these Charles Shaw blends from Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's actually has an elevated brand of wine uh, that they sell for $3.99 big difference here, $2.99 versus $3.99. So I'll make sure to give that one a go to and tell you how I feel about it. But when it comes to these two buck chucks, I really think that they're worth it, uh, especially these three. I wouldn't really speak too highly about the white ones, but um, the Red Blend Cabernet and the Shiraz were pretty decent for the price. So give them a go, explore the world of wine. It's so much fun and there's so much to try. So don't be thrown off by the price tag. Give things a go, see where they're made find out the story behind them, see how cool the story behind Charles Shaw was uh, and how it finally got to Trader Joe's. So always explore, always learn something new. And hey, to learn something new, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I shoot videos every single week, so make sure to click on that notification bell uh, to be notified of my weekly videos. And until next time, cheers everyone.